Thumbelina. There once was a wife who longed for a little child. After many years of waiting, she had almost given up hope. But she went to a wise old woman and said, Please, can you help me? I would so love to have a little child. That shouldn't be too difficult, replied the old woman. Just take this grain of corn, plant it by your front door, and watch what happens. So the wife went home and planted the grain of corn. In the warm spring sunshine, it quickly took root and grew. But the plant that sprang up from the soil was not corn. It was a magnificent flower with a single bud of red and yellow petals. The wife was so thrilled at the sight that she cupped her hands around the bud and kissed it. At once the flower opened and there in the centre sat a tiny little child. Not a baby, but a perfectly formed young girl. She was beautiful and delicate and exactly the size of the woman's thumb. I shall call you Thumbelina, said the woman, delighted at her good fortune. She made a cradle for the flower child out of half a walnut shell with a rose petal for a bed cover. And for several months, they lived together happily in the country cottage. While the woman worked in the kitchen or tended the garden, Thumbelina would perch nearby and sing or tell stories to make the hours pass quickly. But their joy was not to last. One night, as Thumbelina lay asleep in her tiny bed, a big ugly toad hopped into the room through an open window and peered at the sleeping girl. What a beauty! She would make a lovely wife for my son, croaked the toad. And she picked up the walnut shell, sprang back out through the window and hopped off to her home in the muddiest part of the riverbank. Look what I've got for you, she called to her son. Don't you think she's pretty? The son, who was almost as ugly as his mother, goggled at Thumbelina and just croaked in amazement. Be quiet or you'll wake her, snapped his mother. Now you start making a home for her while I make sure she can't escape. Then the fat old toad swam out to the farthest water lily leaf and left Thumbelina there, still fast asleep. When the tiny girl woke next morning to find herself stranded on a leaf in the middle of a stream, she was terrified. Then the toad and her son came swimming out to see her. This is to be your husband said the fat old toad. We are decorating a house in the mud for you to live in. And off they swam again, leaving Thumbelina stranded on the lily. Thumbelina burst into tears. She did not want to marry the ugly toad and live in a house of mud. But help was already at hand. The little fishes of the stream had heard what the old toad had said, and as soon as she had gone, they popped their heads out of the water to look at the tiny girl. Oh, please save me from the toads, she pleaded, tears rolling down her cheeks. I don't want to be married. So the little fishes nibbled through the stem that anchored the lily leaf and it floated away down the stream. Thumbelina was so happy to have escaped that she sang out loud for joy. Then a butterfly, hearing her voice, landed on the leaf. Thumbelina took a silk ribbon from her dress and tied one end to the butterfly's waist and the other to the leaf. Away the butterfly flew again, and soon they were racing along together down the stream. But a big rattly beetle with leathery wings had also heard Thumbelina singing. He swooped down to take a closer look and was so struck by the flower child's beauty that he grabbed her in his claws and carried her to a high tree. Thumbelina was quaking with fear, but did not dare struggle in case she fell. 
Then the beetle set her down on the topmost leaf and gave her honey to eat. He told her how lovely she was, even though she did not look like a beetle. And at first he wanted to marry her. But when his lady friends came visiting, they did not encourage him. She has only two legs and looks just like a human being. How ugly! The beetle was soon convinced that Thumbelina really was ugly. So he carried her down to the foot of the tree and placed her on a daisy. She could go home for all he cared. But where could Thumbelina go? She had no home to go to. So she stayed where the beetle left her. She wove a hammock of grass and hung it under a dock leaf for shelter. She ate honey from the flowers and drank the dew on their leaves each morning. And all summer long she lived there at the foot of the beetle's tree. Then autumn came and winter. The flowers withered and so did Thumbelina's flower petal clothes. She could find neither food nor shelter. It began to snow and she was afraid she might freeze to death. Wrapped in a shriveled leaf, Thumbelina picked her way through a field of stubble, looking for grains of corn. At last she came to a hole in the ground where a field mouse lived. She stood shivering outside the door and begged, Please help me. I'm so cold and I've nothing at all to eat. You poor little thing, said the field mouse. Come into my warm house and dine with me. The field mouse had no children of her own and she was lonely. You can stay here for the winter if you will keep my house tidy and tell me a story every day. Thumbelina was happy living with the field mouse. It was like being back in the old wife's cottage. She felt safe again. But one day the field mouse's friend, an elderly mole, came to visit. The field mouse told Thumbelina that the mole was very rich. He had a wonderful black fur coat and his house was twenty times bigger than the field mouse's. You must sing to him as sweetly as you can, she said, and tell him all your best stories. If only he would marry you, you would always be well provided for. Poor Thumbelina had not the slightest wish to marry the mole. But because the field mouse had been so kind to her, she sang and entertained the mole as charmingly as she could. He was enchanted with her lovely singing voice, and the following week he invited Thumbelina and the field mouse to supper. But the mole led them down the long, dark, underground passage to his home. On the way, they tripped over something cold and feathery. The mole opened an overhead skylight to see what it was. Ha, huh, he said. It's nothing but a dead swallow. How unfortunate to be a bird. All they can do is chirp all summer, and when winter comes, they die of starvation. Then he kicked the bird aside with one of his short, blunt legs. But Thumbelina felt sorry for the bird and could not stop thinking about it, even when the mole started telling her jokes. On the way home that night, she put her head for an instant against the bird's breast, then jumped back in surprise. Very, very faintly, she could hear the swallow's heart ticking away. After the field mouse had gone to bed, Thumbelina tiptoed back down the passage. She wrapped the swallow in a blanket made of hay and held out some water on a leaf for him to drink. At last the swallow spoke. Thank you, my sweet child. I feel much better now. Soon I shall be strong enough to fly. No, no, it's cold outside. You would freeze. You must stay here. So Thumbelina tended the sick swallow all through the winter. And all through the winter, she told stories to the field mouse and sang sweetly to the mole. During the cold, dark months, Thumbelina dreamt of summer and longed to be out in the open air again. But on the first day of spring, the field mouse greeted her with some news. 
You're a lucky girl, Thumbelina. Mo wants to marry you. Thumbelina burst into tears. But I don't want to marry. Oh, the mole is so old, and if I married him, I'd have to live underground with him forever. Fiddlesticks! Squeaked the field mouse. He'll make you an excellent husband. Any more nonsense, and I'll bite you with my white teeth. The mole came visiting every day, and Thumbelina grew more and more desperate. The wedding was less than a week away. Then late one night, when she tiptoed off to nurse the swallow, she found him stretching and flexing his wings. At last, I feel strong enough to fly, Thumbelina. You have saved my life. Is there anything I can do to thank you? Oh, please take me with you! Cried Thumbelina, scarcely daring to hope. Help me escape from the mole. Climb onto my back, then. And we will fly far away from here. As the dawn broke, they opened the skylight in the passage, and flew out into the rising sun. Up and away they soared, further and further, until they reached a warm land where it was already summer. At last, they landed in a field of brilliant flowers. There, the swallow set Thumbelina down. Beside a beautiful red and yellow bud, what a lovely creature," said a young man's voice. "Do stay here with us." Thumbelina looked up in astonishment to see a handsome prince, no bigger than herself, standing in the flower. Bowing deeply, the prince took off his golden crown and placed it on her head. Then asked Thumbelina. Will you stay and be our queen of the flowers? She hesitated. Then fairies came from each flower in the field, bearing her gifts. One, the smallest and sweetest of all the fairies, brought a pair of wings, so that Thumbelina could fly as they did. Then the prince asked again, "Will you stay here and be my bride?" Thumbelina answered. Yes, of course. And the swallow sang for them as sweetly as he knew how, the whole summer long.